I would say that this leg will be defined by the power of nature and how we've been totally humbled by Mother Nature in so many respects. On dit souvent qu'on connaît notre pays, mais vraiment là, j'ai vu des merveilles que je vais jamais oublier. When we arrived in Iqaluit, it was really impactful to to see the community and to interact with people in the community. Just it was such a great entrance way into the trip. Thank you so much. Hey, thank you for everything, guys. I was born in Iqaluit, one of the most fastest growing communities in Canada. It's rich in history and culture, but you also have all these different backgrounds from all over the world in such a small community. Il n'y a presque pas de, de nuit ici. Le, le coucher de soleil dure deux heures et le, après ça, tout de suite après, c'est le lever de soleil. Every time we come close to a shoreline, the fog like opens up into and you're, and you're just in paradise. And uh, the first day we went to Haunt Island and that was probably the most memorable experience for me. It's this remote bird cliff. It's a huge thick build murk colony, but also uh, home to thousands of kittiwakes. It was exciting for me not only to visit it, but also to introduce seabird ecology and marine biology to Canadians from all across the country. We knew that ice was going to be a big part of Leg 7 because we've been following the ice charts along the east coast of Baffin Island. And boy, did we ever get into the ice. There is such a unique feeling of working through ice that I've never felt on a ship before. That was definitely a highlight for me. We were kind of dedicating the day to finding polar bears and walrus. We had some really special encounters. It's my first polar bear, and we got to see two. So it being a mom and a cub, it's, you know, I got two boys at home. So it's, uh, it's really special. It's, it's powerful. I'm just really thankful to be here. Il n'y a pas de mots pour un moment comme ça. C'est vraiment émouvant le paysage. Puis de voir euh, vraiment à un endroit pristine comme ça, on, on est chanceux d'être ici. C'est tellement un beau monde. We went into Tuculito Bay, which was like a almost like a Shangri-La. land has been home to Inuit and Dorset and Thule for thousands of years and in fact after about 10 steps we found some old stone food caches. Two of them here. What else would they use that for okay. David? For whales or walrus. I can tell you that Inuit have always passed through here. If you get bad weather they come docking in here. Yeah. When you're out on the land out there it's so stress-free. It's just absolutely stress-free. Being immersed in nature, I found that very inspiring. I really feel that it's planted a seed in continued writing about environmentalism and also sharing it the cautionary tale that's happening right now, especially in the Arctic. We had to spend two days at sea skirting around the sea ice that almost spread out halfway to Greenland. We experienced probably the roughest seas of Canada's C3 so far. But it was worth every minute because we got in through the ice to Cape Mercy. We saw another polar bear. Oh, 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 oh. 
massive icebergs, including some tabular icebergs, which generally we only see in the Antarctic. C'est un mur de glace qui devait mesurer uh, 1 km par 500 m. Donc c'était c'était massif. So we're looking at these huge pieces of ice and yeah, it's exciting uh, to visualize and to experience, but the truth behind it is uh, yeah, there's some climate change effects there. We arrive to the Coronation Glacier, which is the biggest outlet glacier of the Penny Ice Cap. The Penny Ice Cap, of course, is one of the features of the Iwetuk National Park. And Iwetuk means the place that never melts in Inuktitut. And unfortunately, it is now melting. There's this dichotomy of being stricken by the beauty of this place, but also the sadness that it's changing. Ice played a major role in Inuit lives and we have noticed a huge change within our environment. Inuit and in Nunavut with our small population are limited to what we can do except for bringing awareness to the rest of the world, which is helping what we're doing today. It's such a privilege to be here and we can't take that for granted. Um, there's a responsibility that comes with being on this trip. There's a lot of emotions involved with with engaging in this environment here, but it has motivated me more than ever to want to protect it harder and more fiercely. The future of the Arctic and the future of Canada are very intertwined, and it really comes back down to those very simple things of clean air, water, earth, and our relationship with that. We have become quite disconnected with it, and I think if we can get that connection back, it's going to be the building block from where we can do great things. Mm -hmm.